Hey, hey, let's take a deep dive into ocean waters to see which of these creepy-looking animals are our friends. We're swimming in the tropical waters of Nanina Balava Island near Fiji. Can you see those giant creatures the size of a Volkswagen Beetle? Those are manta rays. They've got a long whip-like tail and large flat diamond bodies. There are two species of manta rays, the reef manta ray and the giant manta ray. They belong to the same family as sharks, but they only have small teeth in their lower jaw. They feed on zooplankton, tiny fish, and crustaceans. Manta rays are social animals, and they like people. Once you let them come close to you, they'll swim around you to observe you. Don't chase them, though, because they're super fast swimmers. Their name translates to cloak or blanket, and out of all sea creatures, they've got the largest brain compared to body weight ratio. These fellas can recognize themselves in a mirror. The Asian sheep's head wrasse follows. Even if it seems unsightly, it's one of the friendliest fish you'll come across in the shallow waters of Japan, China, and Korea. It has protrusions on both his jaw and head. It likes to hide in its anemone, and it's usually scared to go out even at 40 inches long. One of these fellows developed a friendship with a Japanese scuba diver 30 years ago. When the diver found the fish, it was injured, and he helped it recover. The diver had been the caretaker of an underwater Shinto shrine. He calls the fish by hitting the underwater bell. Time to go swimming with the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Though these creatures are sharks, they have a lot in common with whales. They can live for 100 years, though they've got tiny brains. They're indifferent to humans. These fellows don't care about anything they can't eat. And unlike other shark species, they won't bite you. Whale sharks are filter feeders. They do have teeth, 3,000 of them, but they don't use them. They've got a massive mouth, like me. But their throat is only the size of a quarter. Next, we have the sunfish. A fish without a tail that looks like it's been cut in half. It has large fins, and when you see it breaching on the surface, you'll think a shark is approaching. The sunfish dives deep in the water to let other fish exfoliate his skin and remove parasites. Once they're done, it returns to the surface to sunbathe. It's also a voracious eater. If it sees you in the waters, it'll likely approach you and observe you. Within a day, you'll be able to feed it from the palm of your hand. Time for the animal that looks like it's always smiling, the bottlenose dolphin. It's one of the most social sea creatures, and it travels in groups. It enjoys playing, hunting, raising calves, and helping out its community. Bottlenose dolphins are excellent swimmers, with speeds reaching 19 miles per hour. They usually come up to the surface to breathe air through the blowhole on their head. These creatures are great communicators, and they send messages to each other. They use echolocation to navigate and find food. When they spot people, they become very friendly, so much that they let their guard down, and it makes them vulnerable to other sea creatures such as sharks. Heading to the Pacific coast, we'll come across some gray whales. Their skin is covered with parasites and other organisms that make their snouts look like rough pieces of rock. We gotta get on their nice side first. Gray whales can attack a large boat, a ship, or a vessel if they sense their calves are in danger. But generally, they're friendly and appear unbothered by rowing kayakers. In some cases, they'll approach small boats and allow humans to touch them, though you're required by law to keep your distance. If it wants to get closer, it will. If it feels threatened, it will act aggressively. Now, let me show you a fish with a tool on its head, the hammerhead shark. Their skull helps them with hunting. Their eyes are placed on the hammer's outer edges and gives them a 360-degree vertical view. But they've got a blind spot in front of their nose. Their heads are like metal detectors. Most of what they want is below the sand surface. So they lightly dip their heads in the sand and sweep up whatever is under there. You'll see them in temperate and tropical waters, both near the shorelines and offshore. They usually move in groups. They're mostly harmless to humans and divers, but there have been a few occasions where they got aggressive. But before they do, they'll give you a bunch of warning signs, and divers know how to handle them. Now, I'll show you something kind of smaller. 
the sea lion. These creatures are a bit tricky. They're playful, aggressive, arrogant, smart, and above all, curious. Sea lions can't breathe underwater, but they can dive almost a thousand feet deep, and they can hold their breath for a long time. They take in air through their nose, and once they dip their heads in the waters, their nostrils slam shut. If they spot humans at the beach, they'll stay away and wait for them to leave. Wild sea lions aren't the friendliest to anyone, especially if they feel threatened. The approachable ones have been trained in captivity. Beluga whales are next. They're white with bulgy heads, and they're amongst the most social and loudest you'll ever meet. Their upwards-facing mouths make them look like they're smiling. When beluga whales are born, they're a dark gray shade. It takes 8 years for their skin to turn white. They can change the shape of their heads by blowing air around their sinuses. Beluga whales love humans. Once they make human friends, they don't want to leave. Even though they're wild animals, they become too entrusting with people. Marine biologists suggest staying away for their safety. Have you heard of sea cows? Those are actually called manatees. You'll see some in rivers and others in the ocean. Even though they're large, they usually stay in shallow coastal areas, munching on seagrass, leaves, and algae. Manatees bring their heads to the surface every four minutes or so to breathe, but they can hold their breath longer than that. They're slow travelers, and even if they aren't as smart as dolphins, they can understand colors. These fellas are gentle giants, and they like to approach humans searching for warmth. Next, we've got the basking shark the second largest shark in the world. Their mouth is their most impressive feature, like me, since it can open more than 3 feet wide. Okay, you win. These creatures have an intimidating appearance. But despite their size, they're harmless to humans, and divers swim with them. They're very social and can form schools of 100 individuals. They swim near the water surface, filter feeding on plankton. They too have a bunch of teeth that they don't use. Do you know which creature can sing loud songs for 30 minutes? I know, Barry Manatee! Hmm, that might be before your time. <laughs> Actually, it's the humpback whale. Scientists aren't sure why they make those low howls and noises. They might be trying to communicate with others to attract mates. You'll see them near coastlines, feeding on tiny food. And they use their flukes to propel through the water. Humpback whales are less friendly than gray whales because they're very cautious. But they're the heroes of the ocean. They try to save other animals from orcas. And experts say they're capable of decision-making and problem-solving. On one occasion, a humpback whale jumped in to save a whale biologist from a tiger shark. Now, let's try to spot the expert in disguise. The Caribbean Reef Octopus. The specialized color cells help it blend in with the sand and ocean rock's rough texture. But Caribbean reef octopuses are loners, and they like to get around on their own. This creature is also teeny tiny. It can grow almost 5 inches, and with their legs getting as long as the average person's foot. If you get too close to them, they'll likely turn blue and warn you that they feel threatened. Even though they're trusting, it's better to keep your distance to keep them calm. A weird-looking creature walks around like a living vacuum cleaner down in the ocean's pitch-black depths. I'm talking about sea pigs. They got their name from their pinkish bodies, and they fit in the palm of your hand. These creatures don't swim. They walk around on the seafloor. Their legs consist of five to seven pairs of enlarged tube feet, and they have tentacles around their mouths to fiddle through the mud to find scum to munch on. Yumbo! Since they're vulnerable, they have poisonous skin for protection against other sea creatures. If you encounter one, it'll be quite friendly. But if you want to keep it as a pet, you'll need a very deep tank. Speaking of slimy water creatures, let's talk about comb jellies. They're friendly animals that like to swim close to the shore on warm summer evenings. There are two types of comb jellies, some with two tentacles and some without any. You can spot them at night since they glow in the dark and light up the waters. One of them is the sea gooseberry. On the sand, it looks like a transparent blob of jello, and it can fit into a teaspoon. Unlike jellyfish, comb jellies don't stink because they don't have stinging cells, and they're safe to swim with. 
the stonefish. Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contests. Unless the pageant is for best rock look-alike, their tiny unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of, yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on, and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide and seek. The Deep Sea Dragonfish If there were a prize for the most hideous fish in the ocean, the deep sea dragonfish would win. With slimy, scaleless skin, massive teeth, and a face only a mother could love, this bad boy of the sea is nothing to mess with. It likes to swim between 700 feet and 6,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, where the waters are the darkest and coldest. Along with some other creatures on this list, the deep sea dragonfish relies on its bioluminescent body parts to catch prey. It also uses its hanging appendage, which boasts a little red light on the end, coming out from its lower jaw. Many fish mistake this little light for prey, luring them right into the jaws of the deep sea dragonfish. Very clever dragonfish, very clever indeed. The Fang Tooth The Mariana Trench is an underwater trench with a depth of 35,000 feet nearly seven miles below the ocean surface. Let that sink in. While scientists know the Mariana Trench exists, it's one of the least explored places on Earth. It's also the deepest area of Earth's oceans. And although many creatures down there probably haven't even been seen by humans yet, scientists have had the creepy pleasure of getting to know the fangtooth. The fangtooth fish shamelessly lives up to its name. Just look at that thing. The fangtooth is carnivorous and feeds on just about anything it can find that gets caught in its sharp-toothed mouth. These fish rely on their contact chemoreception to find prey. In other words, they can sense chemical residue that comes off of other living organisms in the deep sea. This is because they don't have any light-producing cells on their bodies, unlike many other deep-sea fish. On top of all that, it's pretty dark down there. So, whatever crosses their path, they chomp on. While these guys look pretty scary, they're not a threat to humans. They only grow about 7 inches long. Even so, I wouldn't want to run into one of these things during a relaxing swim in the ocean. The Dunkel Osteus Strangely enough, this prehistoric fish, known as the T-Rex of the seas, had no teeth. Those were replaced with bony plates that allowed it to have the strongest bite among other monsters of its size. The Goblin Shark If you thought the movies about sharks were scary, this next deep sea creature will make you swear off going for dips in the ocean forever. However, it lives 3,000 feet underwater, so you'll never likely see it face to face. The goblin shark looks like a cross between a shark and a creature from your worst nightmare. These sharks boast a protruding sword-like snout with a jaw that juts out to match. Unlike other sharks that have more of a gray hue, this creepy thing looks not so pretty in pink. Aside from their scary demeanor, what do scientists really know about the goblin shark? Well, not much, except that they can grow up to 18 feet in length. Looks like there's still a lot to learn about these guys, if you dare to. By the way, did you know that sharks don't sleep? Many species have to keep water moving over their gills to get oxygen, so they can't fall into a deep sleep like we do. That's why they stay half awake during rest. Typically, sharks don't even close their eyes. The Cookie Cutter Shark This shark is a living horror with lower teeth being big and sharp, while the upper ones are much smaller. When its teeth fall off, the shark eats them to maintain calcium levels. Pretty smart solution for a shark. 
The Frilled Shark Studying the frilled shark is like looking through a portal back to prehistoric times. That's because scientists think that these eel-like sharks haven't changed much since their oldest ancestors roamed the deep sea waters, so they're sometimes referred to as living fossils. These sharks' mouths are filled with a terrifying 25 rows of backward-facing sharp teeth, 300 in total. They're designed to grasp prey and hold them tight so they can't get away, according to early studies of the shark conducted in 1884 and published in the Bulletin of the Essex Institute. Luckily for swimmers, the frilled sharks live between 390 feet and 4,200 feet below the ocean's surface, so they'll probably never run into them. Probably. This is probably the worst nightmare of any dentist. The Northern Stargazer Take a look at this cutie. The Northern Stargazer is definitely not something you'd wish to see on the ocean floor. This horrid creature hides its body under the sand leaving its face above to wait for prey. The Tasseled Wobegong Here's another carpet shark on our list. It lies low on the bottom of the sea and patiently waits for its prey to come by. The Australian Ghost Shark The Australian Ghost Shark isn't really even a shark, but a very bony fish. It's also a living fossil. It hasn't changed within the last 400 million years. Believe it or not, sharks and humans have a common ancestor that lived around 440 million years ago. Even though we both evolved in our own way, there are still some signs of that connection. For example, the genome of an elephant shark is very similar to humans. The Leo Pluridon. This list of terrifying creatures would be incomplete without mentioning the terrifying and prehistoric Leopluridon. This carnivorous marine reptile existed during the Colovian stage of the Middle Jurassic era and ruled the waters at 9 feet in length. Scientists believe Leopluridon thrived in this deep sea trench because of its ability to swim long distances and its four paddle like limbs. While they probably weren't able to propel themselves toward prey like other animals of the area, they did manage to accelerate and attack very ruthlessly and efficiently. Additionally, they relied on their long snouts to smell prey, which leads scientists to believe they didn't rely on sight for hunting. This means they could have thrived in the dark Mariana Trench. Around 150 million years ago, Leopluridon became extinct due to competition for prey against other thriving marine reptiles. And I think I speak for all of us when I say thank goodness for that. Considering that scientists have only explored 5% of the ocean floor and found some of the scariest sea creatures imaginable, one can only dream of what other animals reside in the deep sea waters. Perhaps it's best to keep them in your imagination. Am I right? The Megamouth Shark this shark is a filter feeder, and it's friendly to humans, although its huge mouth can look quite threatening. Like basking sharks, it swims with its mouth constantly wide open, as if it were on Twitter. The Gulper Eel This deep-sea eel has an easily distended belly that allows it to swallow prey twice its size in a single monstrous bite. They have very unusual jaw shapes and can reach about 2 to 3 feet in length. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship. Treasure, gold, diamonds, I'm rich! Well, as you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile! Now don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater. But that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry, you know. Watching one from a distance should be okay. Just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in shallow water. 
If there's one time I'd want to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation.